thank you all for coming today. I'd like to do a quick little introduction and then I'm going to have each one of our panelists tell a little bit more about their role and their company. Uh, I'm also going to launch a quick poll. So as you come in, if you can just sort of tell us um, whether you're a student, faculty, staff, uh, employer, or other, that would be great. And then what we'll do is I'll ask a series of questions for about a half hour and then let our attendees uh, ask some questions to our panelists as well. So if you do have a question, please put them in the Q&A pod and then we'll make sure that um, we get to those today. So let me first of all do a quick introduction to our panelists. Uh, we have Pamela Bruto. She's the Senior Consultant Retail uh, University Relations Manager. She's from CVS Health. We have Diane Guest from, she's an HR supervisor, excuse me, from UPS Global Business Services. And Meredith Cohen is the University Relations Manager at JB Hunt. Uh, so we'll start off, um, just have, what, have each of you sort of, maybe Meredith, you can start, um, talk a little bit about your role, what you do, and what JB Hunt does, and the kind of roles they're looking for. Sure. Um, so I'm so excited to be here today on this panel with the other panelists and to engage with the students today. So thanks for having me. I am Meredith Cohen. I'm our University Relations Manager at J.B. Hunt. As Nicole mentioned, I've been with J.B. Hunt since the middle of September, um, but have been involved in some sort of recruiting ever since I graduated college. So I spent a series of years recruiting students um, from high school into college and then college students into entry-level positions, so internships and, and full-time opportunities. Uh, my role at J.B. Hunt, so I'm located at our corporate headquarters, which is in Northwest Arkansas. So my role really is building our campus recruiting strategy nationwide for J.B. Hunt. Um, I also assist in overseeing our internship program, both at our corporate headquarters and nationwide. And then because of the proximity of where we're located, um, we uh, volunteer a lot in the community and assist with high schools and local universities in the community. So I kind of have a community umbrella too in Northwest Arkansas. So different event programming, bringing students, um, high schoolers and college students on site. So uh, a lot of different hats, but anything related to uh, recruiting college students. Uh, in terms of J.B. Hunt, we're a Fortune 400 transportation logistics company, so we're providing transportation solutions for a diverse group of customers um, in North America, Canada, and Mexico. So my life currently given COVID has been very interesting given working in the transportation space that I know Diane probably too. Um, in terms of the positions that we're recruiting, I'm happy to go into to further detail if there are questions. We recruit students into internships nationwide, uh, really into operations internships, and really what those interns are doing are working alongside of our, our manager trainees or the entry-level roles that we recruit to be driver managers that sit at our account locations across the country. Um, those driver managers really are supporting three different transportation solutions that we provide to our customers. So nuts and bolts of it are their driver recruiters. It's just, it could look different depending on um, which business segment you're aligned to. If a driver manager or driver, um, that type of world isn't for you, we also have um, positions we recruit out of college into um, our brokerage division or our integrated capacity solutions group. Uh, so really where we're connecting shippers and carriers, moving freight from point A to point B. Um, so we have business development representatives that we recruit, uh, which really are identifying possible customers for us. So I guess we could say fun sales people, they're identifying customers. And then really they work alongside our capacity procurement representatives. Those individuals really are connecting shippers and carriers. So they're figuring out where we have capacity, where we can move freight. Um, so I like to think they're really um, important behind the scenes individuals connecting shippers and carriers, whereas our business development people are kind of our, our forefront face of J.D. Hunt as we're identifying customers. So those are kind of the three buckets. Um, and then obviously internships out in the field as well as at corporate, if you want to be in Northwest Arkansas. Great. Thank you so much. Diane, do you want to tell us a little bit about UPS and yourself? Sure. Uh, so I am the HR supervisor at um, UPS Global Business Services in Dunmore. Uh, so right around the corner from the uh, the Penn State Scranton campus. 
And, uh, you know, it's, it, you know, whenever you say that you work for UPS, you know, everybody automatically assumes that you are a driver. Um, however, we've got a lot of different, uh, you know, products and services that, that we do provide. Um, but uh, in our location, we are term global business services because um, the global business services umbrella actually is all those behind the scenes types of um, activities that go on to support um, all of our shipping. So it's accounts payable, it's accounts receivable, um, collections, it's brokerage, um, procurement, I mean, you name it, um, anything that happens behind the scenes, you know, is what global business services actually focuses um, on. So, you know, outside of being 400,000 uh, plus employees, both international and domestic, uh, you know, there are so many different opportunities for, um, for folks, you know, with UPS. Uh, specifically in our facility, we are focused on financial services, so it's billing and collections. Uh, you know, we ultimately have the ability to stop shipments based on, um, you know, the fact that people don't pay. Um, you know, so we, we do have a lot of, you know, kind of what Meredith had mentioned about kind of linking, you know, shippers, carriers, you know, um, we can, you know, we, we've got a lot of power behind the scenes other than just the, you know, the package delivery. But again, I mean, you know, so many different opportunities. If you want to be in operations, there's, there's operations, uh, you know, uh, jobs. If you want to be on finance and accounting, there's those kind of jobs. If you're interested in health and safety, if you're interested in, you know, more of the supply chain, if you're interested in UPS capital, um, you know, there's so many different opportunities, um, you know, with a with a large organization. Um, but for me, you know, my focus, um, you know, is really on the Dunmore facility, um, you know, trying to, you know, kind of staff for billing and collections. Um, I've been there for uh, eight years. Um, you know, it, UPS is a company that never stops. Um, every we measure everything, um, and uh, you know, we're we're always learning something new um, every day. So hopefully that that helps a little bit. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. And Pam from CVS Health, about your role in CVS Health. Sure. Pamela Brudo, Retail University Relations Manager with CVS Health. I am originally from Schuylkill County, Pennsylvania, so not too far from Penn State Schuylkill campuses, um, not too far from Lehigh Valley and from Hazleton as well. So very familiar with all the campuses in that general area. I have been with CVS for just about a year. It'll be a year coming up next week. And similar to Meredith, my background was also in college recruitment. So working with students at local high schools to bring them to a few different universities that I've worked for. Um, as far as what we are specifically recruiting for, I think when people think of CVS Health, they automatically think of the pharmacy, which makes sense because it is one of the largest parts of our business. But I specifically am looking for students from a variety of different backgrounds to fill our front store management positions. So we do have internships available for students that are juniors. And unfortunately, they are completely filled for this summer as of yesterday, but I think it's still some valuable information to have if we have any sophomores or freshmen who are listening to this and, and want some information for the future. Our retail management internship is eight weeks in the summer. It is a paid program where students are basically learning full store operations. So everything like how to manage the financial budget and inventory, people management, obviously being at the core of that and certainly some exposure to the pharmacy as well, which everyone always gets excited about. Our full-time positions available for seniors and recent alumni are for our store manager and training role. And that role is a three month to 24 month position. I think the word training throws people off, but it's still a full-time paid benefits position where Similar to the internship, you're learning those same kind of components, but based on, it's kind of a self-paced program that when you get to the point that you've understood all these concepts and your manager feels comfortable, we hand you the keys to one of our CVS retail locations and you are running the show. So I think that a lot of students might not initially think of a career path um, starting in this type of role, but it really is the first step to future higher level management positions within the company. 
So the natural kind of trajectory is either starting as an intern if you're a junior or coming in as a senior in the store manager and training role, getting promoted to a full store manager, about three to five years in that position, which is a fairly short amount of time before you're looking at something higher level like a district leader where you're overseeing multiple CVS locations or transitioning into human resources or asset protection or corporate marketing, whatever it may be. Learning this first part of the business really being the start to, again, higher level management in the future. These positions are available across New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. I am based out of Philadelphia, but I work with students across those states. And our corporate office is located in Rhode Island. So we definitely have folks that start in this position, learn this kind of first part of the business, and then eventually move there as well. Great, thank you so much. So I think that the first question um, almost everybody wants to know is how has COVID-19 um, impacted your hiring, your current hires, um, your interns for the summer? Um, you know, what can, what can students sort of expect if they were to reach out to your company uh, you know, in the midst of all of us you know, obviously working remote? Um, what's happening at your, at your organizations? Anybody can jump in. So for, for UPS, um, I can tell you that we are, we are still trying to navigate this environment. Um, we have really put our hiring on hold um, simply because a lot of what we do is, you know, on the job training. So it's very difficult to have to do that on a, you know, kind of remote basis. Uh, but we are, you know, as the environment, the COVID environment is changing a little bit, we are trying to determine, you know, how we can maintain social distancing and, and all of the good stuff that's going on um, and, and bring folks in um, because we, you know, we can't wait forever to fill positions, uh, you know, so we probably in the next month or so uh, are going to really look hard at, you know, kind of bringing, uh, bringing folks on. Um, we, we don't have a ton of internship opportunities um, through the course of the year. Usually every session we try to have two. Uh, and unfortunately for our summer internship, um, we did have to cancel that uh, because of the fact that we really weren't sure with a, with an eight week time frame, you know, how much we were really going to be able to benefit that individual, um, you know, and certainly we would look to, you know, the fall, um, you know, for potentially, you know, bringing that individual on um, in an internship capacity. But, you know, I could tell you that we're constantly looking at the situation, trying to figure out different ways to and, and more innovative ways to do some training and, you know, still be able to get people in here. But it is definitely a, a very challenging environment as far as, you know, uh, filling our positions now. Diane, do you think they would consider doing remote internships in the fall? I think it's definitely something that we'll consider. The The struggle that we have with that is that, you know, the intern really does, we, we try to look at efficiencies, um, at gaining efficiencies in our systems and kind of how we do things and have our interns really kind of dig into those processes. So it's a little bit difficult because again, we typically have the intern sitting next to somebody, an incumbent in the position where they can really see what they do on a daily basis. Where are they spending so much time? That becomes very difficult to do, you know, when you're working remotely. Yeah. But, um, you know, we still want to have that opportunity. Uh, so we're going to, we're definitely going to look at that to see, you know, how we can maybe do something hybrid, you know, where it's not completely, you know, uh, you know, work from home, but maybe it's a, a combination. Great. Thank you so much. Meredith? Sure. Uh, sure. So I'll echo. It's, it's been an interesting time for us. Um, I think from an, an internship perspective, we, um, some of our internships nationwide aren't totally built off of a, a truly structured semester or season. So uh, some of our teams end up transitioning our interns into full-time roles. And so they're sort of an off-cycle recruitment period. So when the COVID situation initially occurred, we didn't really see a huge halt in our hiring. Um, we were still hiring entry level. So seniors that are graduating or anticipating graduating, we were still recruiting. Um, and then as we started to see things shift, um, our internships currently are on hold nationwide and at corporate. 
Um, we haven't made the decision if we're going to have a shortened version of the internship, if we're going to cancel it fully. Um, our executive leadership team has continued to talk about it. Uh, initially, when the COVID situation was happening, they were meeting every day um, about just the current state. And so they've been really plugged into the hiring, but the interns were sort of that wild card. So right now, um, they're on hold. Similar to what Diane mentioned, just given the way that we do business, a lot of it is on the job training and in person. It's not lent to be a, a virtual kind of experience in general at JB Hunt. I think we've had a lot of, um, we've had to be agile. We were never really a remote working environment. I think it was an option. So to go completely virtual was huge for us. I think it's been an, an interesting shift for management in thinking. Um, but I will say at our account locations across the country, not all of them have transitioned to remote. They've transitioned to social distancing, rotating team members so that we're safe. Um, so as for internships are on hold there, we are still recruiting across the country for some of those full-time positions at corporate though, we're pretty much on a hold all together on, on our hiring with one exception, which is our engineering and technology group. So we're still hiring software engineers and logistics engineers because right now our digital freight matching platform um, has skyrocketed in terms of, of usage, people being on it, connecting shippers and carriers. And what we found is we've also had to come up with um, solutions uh, through technology to help make it safe for our drivers and for our account locations from a social distancing standpoint. So we've had to build software um, and really our support there is internally by those teams. So um, that's really where things have totally shifted. Um, so we're, we're hiring software engineers and logistics engineers into corporate like crazy and the rest of it is, is on hold. So I would echo Diane, it's just been very interesting and ever changing time period. Um, so I think what we say today may be the same in a week and it could be different in a week. So I know that's challenging as a student completely to just not know. I think it's challenging for us too, uh, to not know in HR. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, we've been doing these Tuesday talks for four weeks now, and I think that's really been the main theme, which is things change so rapidly. And from mm -hmm. week that while we check in with recruiters every week, um, it does change a little bit from what the focus was, how they're adjusting. Um, and I think it's important for students to understand that, you know, what might be happening right now can change in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So can't just say nobody's hiring. Well, they're not hiring just now. But like, you know, Diane or, or Meredith said, uh, even Pam, that in a month that may change and everything will loosen up. Quick question for you, Meredith. Those roles that you had hired for, um, for people that were graduating, students graduating this May, um, are they still continuing on with that hire? Have you postponed those, those start dates? So they are, some of the start dates for them, if they coincided with kind of mid-May to June 1st, they may have been pushed back and it's on an account by account basis. We haven't right. been in a position right now where we've had to um, evaluate those full-time hires and consider whether we can actually have them start with us or not. Um, so I, I don't foresee that happening. That being said, where where those roles could be impacted is, um, as um, I know Pam and Diane experience in their worlds, we have interns to help convert to full-time. We're building pipelines all the time as recruiters, and that's based on you know, customer or client need. And so if our customer accounts are impacted where we thought we were gonna need those people hired, that's where the larger conversation is. Could we bring somebody on and what would that temporary time frame look like? Do we think we could still get additional customers back? We want people to start with us that are gonna have meaningful experiences and work to do and feel like they um, aren't just coming to a job without anything to do. So that's really where the evaluation is right now is the customers that maybe given COVID before for us, kind of were our stable customers. You know, they moved a certain amount of freight, 365 and that was it. And then just because they might be non-essential goods, they may be something that they're, they're impacted. Those are unforeseen things that those um, accounts weren't anticipating. And so those are the conversations we're having. But for right now, we haven't had to kind of rescind offer, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's more we're pushing the start dates if that is happening, but it's been so 
so few right now that have come across my desk where we are concerned about the future of them. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And Pam, what is happening over at uh, CVS Health as far as um, making changes? And you're, you know, you're starting your positions out in retail locations, so obviously there's not an opportunity for um, managers to be remote. So how is that affecting your business? Sure. So yeah, just focusing on specifically what we're talking about on the retail end, we're moving full steam ahead because our retail locations are essential businesses. So I've definitely gotten a lot of questions from students about if there is a potential to move remote. But just as you said, Nicole, unfortunately, there's not. Um, people need their, their Lysol and their paper towels and that sort of thing. So we're still there to um, assist people in store. So our internships are moving full steam ahead, as well as those full-time positions as store managers and training. Overall, you might have seen some things in the news. We are hiring about 50,000 employees across the company. So that's everywhere. That's full-time roles, part-time roles, temporary roles. That is within our warehouses, within call centers, so customer service representative type jobs. It is the largest um, recruiting effort in company history. So we're partnering with a lot of other companies. I know Marriott is one of them. Um, that's one that sticks off the top of my head. Models, I believe, Sporting Goods as well. Some really big name companies that we're working with to bring their displaced workers into CVS. So that's kind of, as a whole, a little bit of information. But specifically with the retail side of things, we don't foresee any sort of interruptions. Certainly understand that some students might have their own personal concerns, you know, with being in the stores. But we are taking all the appropriate measures similar to other businesses with the social distancing. I've seen some stores in my area that have the glass kind of plate structures up to separate folks from the cashiers and the X's on the floors to remind people to stand six feet apart, and certainly some more extreme cleaning measures than we've taken in the past as well. So we're doing everything that we can to keep the business running, but also keep our customers and our employees as safe as possible. Great, thank you. Um, so my next question that is, uh, I know some of you are holding off on interviewing and the, the hiring process, but maybe um, you could speak to how that is changing for students. So if they're applying at one of your um, sites for a position, what does the hiring process look like for them? What can they expect as far as are you still interviewing? Are you um, conducting those interviews via Zoom, obviously, as opposed to face-to-face? -face? I know CBS, it might be a little bit different since you do have those locations. Um, what does that look like for a student who is, you know, would want to work at one of your, your, uh, your organizations? Diane, you could start it, I guess. <laughs> sure. Uh, so we are, we are moving to, you know, kind of the virtual interview, um, you know, where we're using, you know, Zoom. Uh, you know, we already have a portion of our hiring process, uh, you know, kind of where a video interview had, had already been built into it. Um, and then after that point, that's kind of our screening interview. Um, and then after that is where we would move into, you know, the uh, what, what would normally be your face to face interview um, is now going to be a zoom interview. So, you know, it's definitely changing. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I can't speak for everybody, but I know so many people are just not comfortable with, you know, the, the taking something taking the place of, of the in person interview, uh, just because it means so much, um, you know, to be you know, able to interact with that person, uh, you know, so, but that's, you know, in order to keep, you know, our employees safe, but also, you know, the candidates, we've got to go, we've got to go that direction. Great. Pam, do you want to take the next? Sure. So even though we are moving forward with putting students in our internship and full-time roles, we still are trying to limit the interactions between people as much as possible. So we are doing everything either via phone, typically for a first interview, 
And then a second interview, which would traditionally be in person, we're moving to something like Zoom or Skype or whatever the candidate and the hiring manager are comfortable with. So again, that's just kind of to, yes, we are essential, but we're still going to limit exposure for our employees and for the candidate as much as we possibly can. Okay, thank you. Meredith? <clears throat> um, I'll echo both of these ladies, it's the same process. We have a centralized recruiting team that sits in Northwest Arkansas. So traditionally, um, when we identify talent, the first um, part of the interview process, and I apologize, I have an angry cat that's meowing like insane. So I hope you can't hear it. Um, wanting to get inside my bedroom, but on purpose, I close the door. Um, so the first interview is traditionally um, a phone interview or a phone screen with the recruiter that's managing the position. The second phase is that on-site interview that both Diane and Pam mentioned. Um, so those have been uh, converted to <clears throat> Microsoft Teams meetings for us. That's the platform we use at JB Hunt. So um, I realize not the same. It is, it's been a, a shift for everybody uh, because our hiring managers really love to engage with talent in person. Um, specifically in our maintenance group where we um, hire individuals that work on our trucks and, and in our maintenance groups, that's, they have essential um, different skills assessments that happen in person. So immediately when COVID occurred, those were all of those positions were kind of the first to go on hold for us because so much of the interview process is the in-person skills assessment and getting to meet our mechanics. So um, it's been phased throughout, but that video interview is the second interview for the groups that are still hiring. Okay, so I have a question from my colleague and I'll, I'll ask everybody else who's attending. If you'd like to ask um, the panelists a question, please put it in the question and answer pod and then we can kind of monitor them there. Um, but my colleague Alexis um, from our Berks campus would like to know, do any of the organizations utilize the one-way video interview format in the process? Um, we do at UPS, uh, and that is kind of the initial um, interview that happens. So, you know, again, you know, traditionally we were using, you know, regular phone calls, um, you know, for the initial screening. Um, however, we have, you know, kind of shifted that before COVID um, had come into play. So we do a one-way um, video interview um, on the initial piece. Uh, and then from there, uh, depending on the candidate's um, performance during that interview, then we would traditionally moved to the, the in-person and now we're going to be moving to the Zoom interview. Okay, great. Anybody else use that? We utilize higher view for some of our positions. I do not use it personally. Our, our retail management recruitment does not use that, but I believe for some of our pharmacy positions and for some of those higher volume positions, like within the distribution centers and the call centers, they do similar to what Diane said, based on the results of that higher view interview, then there might be a second step from there, but again, not for these particular programs. Okay. And we don't at JB Hunt, we don't use it. Okay, so um, what advice as students go into these, uh, I mean, it's always nerve wracking for a student or anyone to go on into it in interview, uh, into that process, but I think there's a little bit more to the Zoom um, interview as well. So what advice uh, would you give to students who are preparing to do a Zoom interview um, as far as their setting, where they do it, um, best approach to doing it, any tips you can give them as to what you see that really works and maybe things that don't work so well. Meredith, you can start us off. I'll I'm pick. happy. I was going to unmute. I'm like, <laughs> I'm happy to go first. Okay. Um, I think I think the background and the setting is really important to assess before you even begin, just making sure that you have the appropriate lighting. Most of our computers have cameras, so you can kind of set up a, a mock experience or turn on your camera just so you can make sure that you feel comfortable um, and that there aren't any distractions for, for the individuals that you're, you're interviewing with. Um, for me, this might not be for everybody, um, but I always like to to dress the part, even though I'm not going to necessarily be there. Some people like to have business on top and sweats on the bottom since no one gets to see that. Um, for me, I traditionally get fully dressed like I would for an interview just so I can get in the right mindset. That's not for everybody, but I do think making sure that what is seen as professional is important. 
Um, so for me, those are kind of the first two things. I also will tell you that I did my interview for J.D. Hunt via Zoom, and I never went to Northwest Arkansas or saw J.D. Hunt before I accepted the job, which is super rare. Um, and I will tell you, I was a little nervous, and I did a lot of these steps ahead of time just to make sure um, that I felt comfortable. As all of you know, I talk with my hands a lot too, which can be very distracting. <laughs> Diane and Pam are so good with this. They don't do this, but I do it. So making sure that if you are somebody like that, gestures can work to your favor if they're not distracting. If they are, be mindful of it. I always have to be. But those are some of the first few things that come to mind. And I'm, I'm sure these other panelists will have other ideas too to share um, about the preparation and execution. Great, thank you. Pam? Sure, yeah, definitely agree with what Meredith had said. And I think that everyone right now is operating with a little more grace than usual. So um, as Meredith said with her cat before, typically my dog is biting my ankles while I'm trying to do this. So things happen and um, we understand that not every student is able to, you know, go to the library like they traditionally would or be in the quiet of their dorm room. There are multiple people within your household all doing multiple things. So if you need to preface it with, you know, hey, I have, you know, my, my daughter or my son or my uncle or aunt or whoever's in the house, I apologize if you hear any background noise. We understand that this is not a perfect scenario right now. Um, so giving a li little bit of a heads up is definitely helpful. And another piece of advice I always give is just to expect whatever can go wrong to go wrong. So I, my computer crashes maybe once a week. And of course it happened to do so right as I got on this call this afternoon. So by calling in with my phone rather than trusting computer audio, that's kind of a backup plan. So testing your audio beforehand, making sure you get maybe a callback number from the interviewer staying connected on your phone rather than the computer, um, testing the sound quality and that sort of thing. Um, just kind of Murphy's Law with what is going to be wrong will certainly be wrong. So keeping that in mind before you jump on. Okay. Diane? Sure, I cannot disagree with anything that um, Meredith or Pam had said. I agree with all of it. Um, and I think really, you know, it's, it's still so important for anybody to prepare for an interview. So to still make sure that you're, you know, uh, coming up with, you know, doing some mock interviews, researching different questions, you know, practicing all of that, all of those rules for regular interviews, I think, still apply for the Zoom interviews as well. Um, you know, it is uncomfortable. It does take a little bit to get used to for sure. Um, you know, and again, you know, like Pam said, there, there definitely is some leeway, but at the same time, you don't want to take too much of that leeway. So you still want to make sure that you are prepared. Um, if you're prepared in terms of, you know, some of the answers that you're going to be given, that is going to mean so much in the process so that when things do happen, like Pam mentioned, because they will, uh, you know, then it, it still doesn't take away from you and your communication and, you know, how you're trying to sell yourself for, for that particular position. Great. Thank you. We're going to take some questions. I see a bunch of them here and I want to introduce um, my counterpart. I didn't introduce myself in the beginning. I am Nicole Darling and uh, I'm the Eastern Region Employer Engagement Career Specialist and Zach Boulder is the Western Region uh, employer engagement and career specialist. So he's gonna help me out with some of these questions. Um, Zach, do you wanna start and then sure. we'll go from there? No problem, no problem. Hi everyone and, and thank you, Nicole. Um, the, the first question here in our Q&A is actually for Meredith specifically. Um, Meredith, you had mentioned earlier in our chat about some software engineering opportunities currently with J.B. Hunt. So we had um, an attendee asking um, where those positions would be located and, and what would be the best way to, to follow up on an application for one of those positions. Sure. 
Uh, so they're located uh, at our corporate headquarters, so in Northwest Arkansas, assuming relocating here would be something that would interest you. Um, I'm happy to um, connect with the student. I think it was Karen, right, that posed that question. I'm happy to, to connect with her if she'd like. Um, and I, I think Nicole may share our, our email addresses at the end of this, so I'm happy to connect with you. But if you visit jbhunt.jobs, on the left hand side, you can refine your search by location and you can actually see all of those positions that are currently active and you can literally type software engineer and that's the title of the position so you can see them listed there but I'm happy to to connect you with our recruiting team or, or talk to you myself, um, but that's where they're located and how you can find the position. Awesome. Thank you, Meredith. And um, the second question here is actually a similar question for um, for Diane. So. Um, Diane, you had mentioned some summer positions with, with UPS, and we had a student asking about um, the best way to apply for those positions, if there's anything they, they, they could do in addition to just applying on the website. So it, typically we are going to post those positions on the Penn State website as well. Um, and so I would definitely encourage, you know, the um, students to go out to the website and apply um, through your website. But the only way that we can actually continue with the process is if they apply through our UPS jobs um, website. But, you know, right now summer is really kind of on hold. Um, so it would be anything that would be going on fall forward um, that we're still kind of, you know, under consideration for. But um, utilizing the Penn State career website as well as um, you know, then going to our UPS jobs website uh, and then reaching out to me. Um, I have a counterpart that I work with as well. And all that information is typically posted, um, you know, on the Penn State career website. And we'd be happy to, you know, talk over um, the actual internship or the opportunity before um, the student applies. Perfect. Thank you, Diane. And uh, one other question we have in here uh, is more of a general question for all of our panelists regarding um, your use of, of LinkedIn. So how do you guys and, and your organizations uh, use LinkedIn? Do you use it to identify candidates or, or evaluate candidates, post open positions? Um, and, and just generally speaking, what would your advice be to students uh, right now, you know, regarding using LinkedIn to search for a job or an internship? At CBS, we, from time to time, we post open positions on there. I would say it's more so from individual recruiters, maybe not so much um, from the company overall, but my best advice would be kind of just treat it like any social media. So obviously it's a more of a professional website, um, but make sure you're keeping a professional presence on there, that you have all your information the most up to date as possible on there as well. Don't be afraid to send invites or ask for further information from a recruiter. I get a lot of those messages from students after these events and I'm more than happy to answer them. And also just keep in mind, you know, for any of these companies, if maybe the exact roles we're talking about aren't speaking to you today, you can still feel free to send an invite to connect because, you know, six months down the road, I may be recruiting in our pharmacy side of things, just for example, or any of these panelists can be recruiting in a different side of the business, or maybe your plans change as well. So any kind of professional connections you make, um, I think are positive and it doesn't have to be exactly where you're at in this moment, but they could be helpful in the future. I can say from um, the, the status of UPS, <clears throat> excuse me, typically, um, I do not use LinkedIn, um, you know, for any type of recruitment um, activities. Uh, certainly our corporate location, uh, you know, they do have uh, a recruitment team. Um, they do utilize LinkedIn. Um, so, you know, as Pam mentioned, you know, there are times when we do get invites, um, you know, from folks via LinkedIn. The tough part is that I don't always know um, what openings we have uh, unless I'm out, you know, on UPS jobs as well. So. I would proceed with caution with that uh, because oftentimes, you know, I will get, you know, invites to say, you know, I'm interested in a, you know, operations position in California. Um, and it's tough for me even to figure out who might be the recruiter for, for that position in order to get you where you need to go. Um, so I would, I would just be careful with that. Um, and, you know, and like Pam said, kind of treat it like you would any, any social media, be professional, um, you know, in your, in your connections. 
Um, I would say that we use LinkedIn because I'm connected to our corporate recruiting team, similar to what Diane mentioned, that, that the corporate team uses LinkedIn too as a tool. Um, we have a certain subset of recruiters that have professional LinkedIn seats where they can actually go in and, and filter by skill set based upon what you put on your profile. Um, we really see recruiters in our engineering and technology group utilize LinkedIn as a sourcing opportunity for passive talent and then also at the executive level for some of our roles in sales. Uh, so we are using it. I think from a college recruiting perspective, the, the closest area that we may be using it is probably in engineering and technology. If we're looking for talent um, that have come from across the country that might be interested in moving to Northwest Arkansas. Um, from using it during this time, I, I couldn't agree with either of these ladies more that it's definitely a time to um, virtually network, um, to take some time to think about your own profile. How can you develop it? How can you make sure that the message and branding that you're putting out, your personal brand is aligned with what you'd like it to be um, because of how kind of the world has slowed down in a weird way when it comes to um, the pace of things right now. So I would say, um, as they've mentioned, it is a professional kind of social media platform. So take the time to make sure that the, the foot that you're putting forward is, is the best one. And um, for the companies that are using it, they're going to be pulling those skills and making sure that they align with the positions that are right for them. So be cognizant of what you're putting on your profile um, to make sure that you could potentially appear in those searches uh, by, by recruiters of different companies. Thank you. So I have a question as far as um, if a student um, had an internship plan for the summer and it was canceled, what advice would you give them um, as far as how they fill that time um, so that when they do go to apply for an internship in the fall or even next summer, um, what would a recruiter be looking for to see what they did during this, this time where we're all remote and unable to, to sometimes do those internships? I think maybe doing some informational interviews, um, you know, maybe finding some contacts in different organizations where, you know, you can still learn about what that organization does, maybe something that is, you know, consistent with your, um, with your major, uh, you know, so I think it's just, to be honest with you, anything that's going to show initiative that you've kind of tried to fill that time, I think is going to be extremely helpful. Um, but I probably would go the route of, you know, trying to make some connections, um, maybe have, um, you know, maybe try and set up a, like a little bit of a mentoring type of scenario where, you know, maybe it's a weekly call or maybe it's biweekly where you're just trying to, you know, kind of talk through some things that you might be interested in, you know, the um, employer might be telling you some things to watch out for, or some skill sets to focus on. Um, so I think it's still, you know, how do you look at gaining knowledge um, that you can certainly apply down the road? Um, I think that that would be really helpful for somebody to kind of fill the, fill the time, fill the void. Thank you. I would say too that I'm not 100% sure that as employers, we've 100% figured out what the perfect thing to have on your resume during this very unique time is. I think mm -hmm. that there's going to be, like we've mentioned with the video interviewing, there's going to be tremendous grace during this time. Um, there are, are Americans everywhere that have tons of experience to are just hoping to secure that internship that are going through the same thing. And so like Diane mentioned, that initiative, demonstrating that you're trying to continue growing and expanding your knowledge in areas that are of interest to you will be valuable to you um, regardless, I think, during this time period. What I have seen students do, and I wish we had a better solution at JV Hunt for this, but students have reached out to me and have said, um, you know, are you still pursuing uh, talent for summer internships? And, you know, right now we're on hold as many employers are. And so they've responded back saying, are there any project opportunities that you have? Are there opportunities where, you know, I could connect with you and do some sort of virtual job shadow, or I could have an opportunity just to gain more um, knowledge and understanding about a role? Um, Right now, I don't think we're in a position to offer that at JB Hunt, but I love that demonstrated interest, that ability to say, do you have anything that might be different than the norm? 
um, because we are seeing certain internships by employers across the country that they're, you know, they may have a two week internship or they're giving a project based opportunity. So I think also kind of thinking outside of the box there too, and also being mindful of the industry of those companies that you're asking those questions of, because for us right now, a lot of our jobs are that like as Diane and I have mentioned, it's kind of that on the job training. It really requires that an in-person experience, but some of these companies that have operated virtually well before this current scenario may have tons of project-based opportunities or unique ways for you to engage. So I might also throw that out there as opportunities or options. If somebody comes back at you and says, unfortunately, we don't have internships, um, because they may have other opportunities or might consider something that they hadn't considered before because you gave them that opportunity. Yeah, at Penn State, we call those project-based um, sort of opportunities, gig experiences. Mm -hmm. We are seeing more and more of those sort of coming online and we do post them on Nittany Line Career. So if students are interested in looking for a short-term opportunity, that isn't necessarily an internship, but a short-term project that they can do remotely, they may want to check out Nittany Lion Careers um, for those opportunities. Pam, what, what would you suggest? I would add, um, echoing exactly what Diane and Meredith said, kind of staying as active as possible. So if maybe the only route you can go is taking some online classes that you weren't initially planning to do, that's something to at least kind of keep you in that same frame of mind right now. For CBS Health individually, if, when we get to a point where our internships are full or if I get students that are younger that are sophomores or freshmen that are interested, I often say, you know, apply for one of our part-time jobs or hourly paid jobs such as a store associate or a shift supervisor or an operations supervisor, something along those lines. So one, you're getting paid you're getting some work experience. And then when the time comes around next year or in the following years for the internship, you're kind of a top candidate because we wanna hire from within first and foremost. You already have a little bit of experience under your belt and it makes the whole kind of transition from part-time to internship to full-time a lot quicker and you're moving through the company faster than someone just coming externally. So. Maybe it's not ideal, you know, to be working a, a summer position within a store, again, similar to a cashier type position, but if it's something you do for a few months and it helps you get one leg ahead in the future, then I think it's definitely worth it. Great. What would you say about flexibility? I know um, because so much hiring has sort of stopped for the moment, um, do you think students need to sort of open their mind to maybe different possibilities that maybe weren't their first or second choices, um, but find that flexibility and, and find that, um, that position uh, that they maybe didn't think of or were planning on with industries that are thriving, which is the three of yours are certainly, uh, you know, definitely uh, meeting the, the challenges to, to the world that we're living in now. Yeah, I'll um, jump on and just kind of continue my piece of the conversation here that my biggest piece of advice is always to step outside your comfort zone. I'm sure that Diane and Meredith, Nicole, Zach, everyone here can talk about a time where they've probably gotten into a position or an opportunity or everything that wasn't the first choice, but it led to something that you weren't expecting. And the good thing about internships right now is I don't want to say they're an experiment, but you know, you might do something that you didn't think of and you absolutely love it, or you might do something that was never on your radar and you don't like it. And it's something you can at least cross off the list as something to not get into full time. So right now is a good time to, again, step outside the comfort zone, see what it can bring. It's not a lifetime commitment, whether it is an internship or a full time role. Although all of us I'm sure would love to keep great candidates within our companies for as long as possible. With juniors, with seniors, with recent alumni, this is definitely a time to explore a little bit and maybe find something that, again, wasn't initially on the radar, but can definitely lead to a great career, great future opportunities. Great, thank you. Anybody else? I, I mean, I yeah, I don't think- Go ahead, Diane. Oh. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, sorry. Um, so I don't think any experience is ever a bad experience. It might not be 
an experience that you like. It might not be a job that you like, but you've got to figure out, you know, even though I, I might not have liked this, you know, what kind of skills did I develop and how can I apply that going forward? Um, you know, like I said, everything that we do, you know, we may not realize it at the time, you know, kind of sets us on a path. Um, so I think it's finding, you know, finding the good, um, you know, in an experience and being able to apply that going forward. Um, so funny story, uh, Pam, I was a CBS um, store manager for um, quite, quite a few years. Um, I actually started out in the, the, uh, the trainee program down in the Philly area and then relocated up into the Pocono region. Um, so I learned so much, so much being a store manager. Um, and honestly, that kind of really solidified my decision to be in human resources. And, you know, unfortunately, I didn't stay with CVS because there weren't those opportunities. Um, but wow, I mean, you know, believe me, it's a tough job. But when I looked back at it, how much I grew and how much I got out of it was something that, again, benefited me in the future. So never look at an experience as a bad experience. It just might not be something that you would want to do forever. That's great. That's awesome. That's so and look, wonderful. I wasn't lying. You can start here and then you can be successful in <laughs> HR like Diane, even if you Absolutely. take what you learned at CVS to another company. <laughs> yep. That's yes. so cool. I think the one thing I think the one thing I would add to is um, it's really easy to get caught up in what the path should be or what you've dreamt it should be for, for a long time that kind of redirecting is the hardest part because it's so counter to what has been on your mind. And I can tell you, I, not to date myself, but I graduated in 2008 in the recession and I had a plan that was working in the music business. That was my major. I had things planned. I had an internship that was going to transition and that didn't happen because jobs changed. And so I ended up getting an offer because I had to work in recruiting because I had been um, an ambassador and somebody had seen me give campus tours and present on campus and they thought I'd be great in a recruiting role. And so what I, and I was so against doing that because it was so much what I hadn't intended on doing. And I, and I took the opportunity because I needed a job, right? Which we may all be in. You might be in that situation where you're like, I need a job, I'm graduating. Um, but what I would say is think about the things that you're really good at. Right now, if you're somebody that isn't presented with an alternative opportunity, what, what are your strengths outside of just the, the core curriculum that comes with your degree program and that skill set of knowledge, but what else can you bring? And if you don't feel like you know what those things are, talk to mentors of yours and ask them what they think that your, your strengths are. Um, and, and consider positions that allow you to amplify those um, and allow you, because you're going to be able to naturally do that well while you're still learning about an industry or a job or a company that you didn't know about. I would also challenge you to think too, if you're somebody, what motivates you? Are you somebody that's motivated by um, like, you're never going to be happy if you're working for a company that everybody doesn't think is great. Like if, if that, if that name brand thing is really going to get under your belt, think about how you're going to combat that. If you're somebody that like money's the biggest thing, think about how you're going to combat that because similar to rerouting, that's also going to be the thing that's going to itch away, uh, for you. And for me, one of those things was, do I believe in the company and its values and what it stands for? Because I know I can't go to work every day and recruit for something that I don't believe in. And if I'm getting up every day and I'm having to go do that and I don't believe in it, every day is going to be a challenge and every day is going to be hard. And that's just something that's an element you can remove. So I would think about what am I good at and what's important, like what are going to be the things that motivate me and are important to me and find um, a way to hopefully blend those as best as you can, it's not going to be perfect, but if you can kind of connect those things, it'll make the transition into an industry, into a job, into a field that you hadn't intended a little bit easier than having all those things be chipping away at you every day. Um, because I know that's the hardest thing. You have all these plans and then they change and it's how you see that change as everybody says is opportunity. I know it's so cliche, but trying to be really positive through it too, because you have so many things to offer an organization. It just may look like a different position than you had intended. 
And look, I'm recruiting. That's like what I <laughs> fell in love with. And I like intended to work for like an indie record label. It'd be like really cool, like cooler than I am. So like this was the perfect place for me. So it ended up being a true blessing in disguise. That's great. And I think some really great advice from all of you. Um, I have one quick question because um, I know my colleagues will want to know about your future recruiting and what that looks like. Are you, are you going to be participating in virtual career fairs? Are you planning to try and get onto campuses this fall? Uh, has anything changed as far as how you normally would recruit? And then I will let you go. <laughs> Pam, what do you what are, what is the plans for CVS? Sure. So we have done a number of virtual career fairs in the spring. Want to continue doing them if possible. Right now, as we've said over and over, things can change quite a bit. Um, we are not planning on being on campuses this fall as much as we want to be. We want to have that human connection. So we are working on what the fall is going to look like. I think it's going to be a lot of these kind of Zoom sessions, information sessions, chat-based virtual career fairs, whatever kind of works best for the school. But at this point, I mean, I hope come, you know, September things have changed a bit. At this point, we anticipate everything being as we are now um, virtually. Okay, thank you. Diane? Yeah, I think, um, you know, as far as, you know, some of the recruitment activities that we've had where, you know, we did more face to face, I think that's definitely going to be something that uh, isn't going to be happening as much. So we probably will go the route of, you know, the virtual career fairs. Um, but it's just so, so uncertain at this point, um, you know, to, to really tell you what, what it's going to look like. Um, even if we're going to potentially not, you know, hire for as many positions as we were, uh, you know, just so much up in the air. But we are going to have to, you know, do some things that are different, you know, in order to fill some of the positions that we have. So I do anticipate a lot that's going to be done on a virtual basis. And Meredith? I, I think we're in the daydreaming phase of hoping that this isn't going to be our life come September. Like, I love how Pam's like, we're anticipating our virtual approach. I think we're like, can this end? Um, yeah. So for us right now, we haven't fully committed to a, a virtual engagement strategy for the fall. I think our hope is that it doesn't get that way. For me, I think my job is going to them and saying, if this is our life, what's our plan? So I think maybe more, it's more stress on me right now is to, to figure out what this looks like, just because uh, it's so counter to how we've recruited in the past. Our hiring managers and our local professionals love being on campus and love engaging face-to-face -face with talent, as I'm sure students love as well. So It'll definitely be, we've, we've done a few virtual career fairs, which was an adjustment for all of us. Um, and we had to be agile and learn through that. So I think it, if it's what is required for us to be successful in the fall, we're gonna suit up and join the races. Uh, in the meantime, I'm praying every day <laughs> that we're all safe and we can be back on campus engaging with talent. Um, so more to come. Yes, yes, and that's a hard question to answer. So I appreciate you all taking a stab at it. Um, I want to share my screen really quick so that um, students who would like to reach out and contact you have that information. Uh, just a quick note, we do have another Tuesday talk with the recruiters coming up um, next Tuesday. We're going to be focusing on um, educators. So uh, we're helping to promote our uh, education career days uh, on May 14th. Uh, 1 to 4 p.m. So we're going to have some of those uh, recruiters who are going to be at that career fair um, part of our panel for next week. So please uh, attend that if you are interested. But I want to take um, just a quick second and thank all of you for coming. You've given um, all of us, uh, my colleagues as well as our students, um, a lot of information to help us out, uh, kind of, you know, map a terrain or, you know, get through the train here. On, on the time when everything is so up in the air and changing rapidly. So thank you so much for taking the hour out of your time today and um, helping us all out here at Penn State. Thank all right. you. Thank you. Yeah, it was my pleasure. Thank you so much and have a great day and uh, we will be in touch. Good luck to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.